A little flexibility can go a long way. By refinancing your newer used auto loan with PenFed, you can lower your monthly payments for more flexibility in your budget. You can even schedule your first payment for up to 60 days from the date of your refinance. Calculate how much you can save at penfed.org slash auto refi or call 1-800-247-5626 to apply. Membership is open to everyone. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. The Cricket Badger Podcast IPL Daily, in association with Moonrise Cricket, Indian Premier League 2020, 13th edition, every day, every game, every spill, every fill, every triumph, all the way to the IPL Trophy. Hello, welcome along. It's the Cricket Badger Podcast, IPL Daily. Thank you very much to BodylineTshirts.com and MoonriseCricket.co.uk for their support of this Cricket Badger podcast. And we've just seen a terrific game in Charger. Not terrific if you're a KKR fan, though. RCB winning by 82 runs. A really good performance by uh, the Royal Challengers to date. And to help me talk about that and then look ahead to tomorrow's action, I'm joined by Abhishek Bahari and Neil Varani. Neil, we'll start with you. RCB today, I don't think you can get a, a more perfect T20 performance. I mean, you can always improve on stuff, but they were fantastic with the bat in hand. Everybody contributed, and then the bowling was all round terrific as well. Yeah, Virat's going to be very, very happy. I thought there was a, a little period where KKR dragged things back in the middle of the RCB innings, but then Virat kept his cool, kept handing over the strike to AB and AB, well, I want to say it was out of this world, but he does it so often, it's almost becoming uh, standard now. He's just incredible to watch, isn't he, AB de Villiers? I ask on my podcast, generally, um, if you could be a different cricketer for 24 hours, who would you pick? My answer would always be AB de Villiers, because just to play some of those shots that he plays would be well, very strange to me, because I've never played anything like that. But for him, it's just commonplace, isn't it? It's incredible. He's an absolute natural. You, you look at people like Smith, and Coley, and while they clearly have a base level which is extremely high, you can see the work that they put in, the hours in the net, the dietary requirements. Um, the Smith seems to just shut himself off from everything else. But AB is a God-given talent, the likes of which we haven't seen probably since Sir Viv. Well, that's high praise indeed. Sir Viv is uh, right at the top of the tree as far as I'm concerned. Abhishek, um, looking at RCB with the bat, first of all. Finch, Padical, terrific as opening partnership. Finch seemed to have a different mindset today and, and, and attacked and looked far better for it. Coley was a little bit reserved for him, but he played very sensibly because he played for AB and uh, got them up to that 194 for two. They scored a phenomenal amount of runs in the last five overs and that was the, that, that last five overs of the RCB innings was, was what ultimately took it away from KKR, wasn't it? Yeah, I think absolutely. It was not one of those typical Sharjah pitches where you could just slog around and get 220s. I think it was very, very difficult to bat on. With uh, a lot of slow cutters were also used by the KKR bowlers. And I think a par score, uh, which I believe uh, would have made sense for the KKR, would have been somewhere around 160, 165. But with 190s in the board, I think uh, the game was done and dusted more over there. And I think uh, Particle played really well. I think uh, Finch also got a start, but he was struggling a bit, I would say. But uh, Particle was really, really fluent. Uhuli struggled a bit. And I think ABD was probably batted on a different surface to all the batters that we had in the game. Probably those last five overs where around 80 runs were scored, I think that took the game away. And you could see when the KKR batters were batting, uh, even though RCB were really good, there was not a pitch to where you could probably bat at 10 uh, over for 20 overs. So I believe that's somewhere where the game was won and lost and that AB 73 of 33 was probably a bit different. Looking at the RCB bowling attack, we talked about it quite a lot early on in the tournament. The RCB looked to be a, a far more balanced side than they have done in recent years in the IPL. And two of the, the main um, benefits for Virat Kohli that he's got at his disposal in the field, Washington Sundar, two for 20 from him from his four overs today, one for 12 from his four overs for Yuzvendra Chahal. Those two combined just squashed any life out of KKR's response. And if you're Virat Kohli as captain and you can throw the ball to those two, knowing they're going to be reasonably economical, it's a great asset to have, isn't it? 
Yeah, I think absolutely. The spin duo has been magnificent for the RCB franchise. I think Chell has been doing it for the past few to four years. So there are no surprises about the same. Uh, but I think the issue with what uh, I personally believe had been with Sundar is that he probably the RCB played most of their games at the Chinna Swabi Stadium. And Chell is one of those bowlers who makes use of those big square boundaries, right? So those things which you would have definitely got into what you could say, uh, the stands of the Chinna Swabi Stadium, that probably work in Abu Dhabi and in Dubai. Probably that confidence which he got by bowling there and in his last four or five matches, every match that he has bowled Sundar in the power play he has been really, really economically becoming 16 runs, 20 runs, 22 runs, something like that, right? I think he carried on that uh, format, uh, form into this game and also what happened is uh, the pitch was not that typical charge of it. But again, I would say a magnificent effort. Chehel, I expect every day from, I believe, the trio of EVD videos, Virat Kohli and Chehel that makes that base core of the RCB and I think uh, uh, additions like Morris I would mention and Sundar I think they are really uh, helping the because uh, in today's game you could probably see that Kohli had that genuine 6 or 7 bowling options right Neil, we were talking about uh, Morris coming into the side uh, just before we pressed record though. He's played two games now. He's obviously back and he's fit and firing. He's added quite a bit, hasn't he? That, you know, RCB need to have that solid pace bowler that they can rely on to open the open things up and then to come back later on and be reasonably economical. He obviously had some runs down the order as well, which we've not seen yet, but he's a, a big addition to our RCB. Absolutely huge. With Morris, I think people remember the... Uh, the great batting innings. Um, there was one against Gujarat Lions where he scored 70-odd off about 30 balls. Um, there was one for South Africa against England. And he does wield a, a really long handle, but his bowling is very economical. He's got a ridiculous economy rate at the depth over the years. And he's seemed to have rubbed off on Saini and Siraj and the other RCB fast bowlers in a way that we haven't really seen before, so that this bowling attack is actually able to now defend the totals that AB and Virat put, uh, put in front of them. We've seen in the past, um, a couple of seasons ago, where Andre Russell took down 200 from a seem- seemingly unwinnable position. The RCB bowlers have tended to get smacked around, but the economy that Morris now brings, and the aggression as well, is really helping them out. We saw Tom Banton come into the top of the order for KKR today, Neil, and obviously English uh, listeners to this will know Tom Banton very well for his feats with Somerset and, and for England, a, a very young, bright talent. But he looked a little bit like a rabbit in the headlights today. He looked quite nervous. Yeah, and unfortunately I could see that happening. He's been absolutely brilliant in the blast and in the big bash where the pitches are very true and he's got the wide open spaces in the power play. But he had a very bad time of it in the PSL. The lad's clearly immensely talented, but it's a very steep learning curve to go up against pace attacks in the Pakistan Super League. And then the IPL, which is a step above, again, we're talking about the best bowling attacks in the world, probably better than it'll face in international cricket. So he will learn and he will be a great player in the years to come. But it's very, very tough to ask him to come in and face these guys at his age and his experience. Very quickly, Neil, the the only two Englishmen that I can think of that have actually really had a good IPL so far are Joffre Archer and Johnny Bairstow. Um, Joss Butler's had one good innings. The, the rest of them have been a little bit patchy at best, haven't they? The Curran brothers have been hit or miss. Chris Jordan has been quite expensive. It's not been a fantastic IPL for the English so far. It hasn't, but these are very foreign conditions. Um, so a little bit slack and the English players have come off. Um, some of them have had three months in bubble, which must be extremely tough mentally playing on much different conditions in Southampton and in Manchester. I think Sam Curran has been a bit of a bright spot um, personally. I think his bowling's been pretty good and he's added a bit of impetus in a sun or marine way. You don't expect him to stay in for a long time, but he'll be in for a good time. <laughs> Bodylinet-shirts.com. Browse the finest collection of cricketing t-shirts on the web. Hundreds of original cricket designs for cricket players and fans alike. Featuring everyone and everything from Larwood to Leach and Cow Corner to Chin Music at Bodylinet-shirts.com. And you can get 10% off your first order using the code BADGER at checkout. Bodylinet-shirts.com. 
T-shirts for the discerning cricket fan. Abhishek, the the pitches are starting to change, aren't they, out there in the UAE? Sharjah that started off being a 230 wicket, sixes raining down on the road outside. Looked a lot slower and a lot more spin friendly today. And are we going to see the spinners now come into it over the second half of this league season? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, we have started to reach the phase where the spinners will probably be at the forefront of the things. And you could see the teams which are depending a bit more on their spinners, like the Sunrisers Hyderabad, which depend a lot on Rashid Khan, and uh, the RCB, where the Spindo of Chehel and Sundar are there, uh, to start to make more of their works in progress. Like right? Even I think DC probably lost a big uh, advantage when Abid Mishra was ruled out. I think he's a a uh, wily off spinner who has been around and he's the second highest wicket taker but i believe akshar patel is a decent replacement for him alongside uh, ashwin so yeah definitely i think we've started to reach the point and i think even as we go more around i think uh, with the which is getting a bit of slower and the boss has started to scale around and uh, the spinners will be getting an extra jump especially some of the spinners like sundar who have that extra height where they can also generate a just a enough bit of bounce to you know get off the batsman i think we are probably reaching the phase and i think the upcoming window, the transfer window, a lot of things will probably uh, move around with some of the teams trying to get their extra spinner. Uh, especially, I think Mayank Markande is one of the spinners which I believe some of the teams will be looking around. And the other thing I wish that's starting to change or has cha- changed over the last week but teams have been slow to catch up with it is that batting first on these surfaces seems to be the best way forward because they get slower as the game goes on and chasing... You know, is, is often the hardest thing to do. We saw KKR fall short today. I think eight of the last 10 sides batting second have lost. And uh, I think captains are starting to latch on to that now and batting first, aren't they? Yeah, I believe that the things have started to change, I think. But it's just like uh, when the tournament started, a lot of things want, uh, teams wanted to chase. But then based on the grounds uh, and uh, a lot of disparity, the boundaries at Dubai are just a way too just bigger, right? And the Saja are just a bit too... So, see, like, I still believe that these are just the stats uh, you have to just analyze. Like, I would say I would really like to uh, make a special mention to Cole. He was bang on. He was like, it, the, ping will, uh, the pitch will start to get slow even in the first innings also, right? So, he was bang on in the assessment. And I think uh, rather than going around that, everyone is batting. So, he'll really bat first. You have to go and see the strip. If you see that the, the strip is probably losing a bit of the shine and probably the darkness is coming in. So probably it is an indicator that probably in the later half of the inning it will probably get slow and then there is a no-brainer to bat first. You just cannot go by your team strength that you are someone who bats deep like a CSK. They have chased all of their games and they have lost, right? So in most of their games, the pitch started to behave a very stagey in second inning. So instead of just going by your team combination, you have to see, you have to analyze the pitch uh, where that coaches come in, the captain comes in and then you have to take the decision. And I think as, as of now, as the moment, probably the pitches are getting a bit Lower in the second inning, in all the three, I would say in all the three grounds. RCB then winning by 82 runs today in Sharjah over KKR. That means that Mumbai Indians, Delhi Capitals and the Royal Challengers Bangalore after seven games are all on 10 points at the top of the table. KKR are in fourth on eight points. Sunrisers and uh, Rajasthan Royals are on six points after seven games. And CSK and KXIP are bringing up the rear. CSK on four points, KXIP on two Mm -hmm. points. And we are now exactly halfway through the league part of the season. Moonrise is a sports engagement website to allow sports fans to learn from the very best. Get a personal video message recorded for a fan's special occasion. Have a professional cricketer as your next coach by getting video feedback or having a 30-minute conversation with some of the world's best players. Players such as Jimmy Neesham, Colin Munro, Tammy Beaumont, Danny Wyatt, Monty Panasar. Visit MoonriseSports.com or go to Moonrise Sports on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Moonrise Cricket, let's play. Guys, let's have a look at the uh, Moonrise moment of the match then. If uh, I ask you first, Abhishek, what would your nomination be for your moment of the match today? Well, if I have to say the moment of the match, I would, say, I would probably say the starting two to three overs which were bowled by the RCB bowlers would be my moment. I would not like to point a singular, but the starting three overs is probably yielded on a 16 runs. Because if you see uh, last year at uh, at the Chinna Army Stadium, nearly the same thing happened. EBD and uh, Virat Kohli posted a very big score, some 205. Probably it was really important that the bowlers started to get that good grip and you bowlers started to bowl those lines which were difficult to hit. 
So I also I always personally believe that if a bowler is bowling the right lines and the batsman is doing his good job and he's hitting it for four or six, I don't blame the bowlers, right? But the problem with the RCB bowlers is many many times bearing chehel is that they have massively erred in their right line and they in the last four to five overs they have just swept away the games from the teams. So I believe the starting made the uh, batsman of the KK realize he's not going to be the test and then you will see the wickets of Morgan, the wickets of DK. They were all perished tried to hit because the run rate was. Just a bit too high because it has already started to creep into 11, 12, 13, 14. I think the first three overs probably I will say those three overs is the 16 runs for my defining moment of the game. Neil, your moonrise moment of the match today? It's not a single moment, but AB was batting on a different pitch to everyone else to accelerate the way he did. I think he was about run a ball when uh, when he got 10 runs um, and then scored 60 odd off the next 20 was just absolute lunacy on a pitch where no one else really timed the ball apart from Padical um, and Finch in the first couple of overs when the ball was still hard. Um, I think Abhishek called it right. Um, Calcutta could have given it a really good fist if they had uh, gotten away to a good start because those first six overs were where you really needed to get motoring before um, the field went out and uh, the spinners really came on and Signe and uh, Morris did really well. But AB was just unbelievable today. He's just a different class to almost everyone else playing the game. Abhishek, you gave a really good answer, but I do not need ever to be convinced by AB de Villiers. Neil, I'm with you. AB de Villiers is the man of the match, moment of the match. He is everything to me and he takes the moonrise Moment of the match today. Want to get your game the very best it can be? The future of coaching. Talk to a pro. 30-minute video conversation. Video analysis from players at the top of their game. Video shout-outs. Get a personalised message from a pro. Great for birthdays, congratulations messages, a prank or a simple hello. Visit MoonriseSports.com or go to Moonrise Sports on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Moonrise Cricket, let's play. Let's have a look ahead then to uh, Tuesday's game. And it's Neil, it's your team, isn't it? Back in action after a disappointing defeat in the last game. Sunrisers are taking on the Chennai Super Kings. And Chennai Super Kings are a side that desperately need to get back to winning ways. Neil, Chennai will be motivated, but Chennai... I I look at KKR coming into today's game and I've seen them beating CSK and I've seen them beating Kings Eleven. And with all due respect to those two sides, they are the two weakest sides I've seen in the tournament so far. So for me, KKR's test was today and they failed that. Sunrisers have had disappointments, but I think they've got enough for... To, to see off CSK because I don't think CSK have got a huge punch in them anymore. Are, are you confident ahead of this game? I'm semi-confident. I was uh, I was pretty confident uh, five overs from the end uh, yesterday, so uh, I'm not going to go too far. But CSK have looked very very strange um, when they were chasing against uh, against RCB. It was just so pedestrian. Um, Ryudu going at run a ball for 40, uh, however far behind the required run rate they were. Um, the new lad, uh, Jagadeeson, obviously looked a bit uh, overawed to begin with, but then managed to pick it up a bit at the end. There's just a very strange air about CSK. Um, I heard Fleming come out with not so much an excuse, but an explanation that the squad was picked to play at the Chepok and um, they're not as well equipped uh, for these these conditions and these pitches. But yeah, they just they, they don't really seem to be at the races. They could they could all say that though, couldn't they? And to be honest, the pitches in the UAE aren't massively different to India, are they? Certainly not now. N- not now that they're slowing up and starting to turn. I think they were very very good to begin with, which a lot of people weren't expecting, myself included. And I think we forgot that these stadiums are going to be holding 30 plus games each. So the groundsmen had to make the pitches very good to begin with so that they didn't just deteriorate into 
potato fields by yeah. the end of the tournament. I, I've seen I've seen quite a few games in the UAE in my time, and the you know actually going out there on pre-season trips with English counties and what have you, and very very used to seeing 125 plays 120. I think we'll get to that by the time we get to the end of this this tournament, and it wouldn't surprise me at all to see some quite low scores as we get towards the end of the league stage. The, the disappointing thing for me because I I actually tipped Sunrisers at the weekend, and I thought they were home and hosed, and then. There was that drop catch, wasn't there? In that was it, seventeenth over, which was quite a simple catch, but he just overran it and didn't get his hands to it, and that seemed to make um, Tuati believe. And Sunrises in the end were Tuati, weren't they? <laughs> I think we're going to see uh, a bit more of that from Raul Tuati over the uh, tournament. He's got a uh, touch of the mongrel in him, which we all like to see. Um, apart from David Warner, who uh, probably sees himself in there a little bit. The problem that Sunrisers have got is the fifth bowler. We're trying to squeeze four overs out of Abhishek, Vijay Shankar, Abdul Samad. Priyam Garg, I think, is bowled a couple. Um, and those are the ones that are getting targeted. And until we can find a, a way to at least come off economically, say eight runs and over, nine runs and over out of those four, then we're really going to struggle. Abhishek, the Chennai Super Kings, they have really disappointed me in this tournament. They're getting older, but they, they just seem to have lost a lost a bit of belief, a bit of punch, a bit of, I don't know what. How, how do you see them? Do you, can, you, can you see CSK coming back and making the playoffs again, or do you think they'll just kind of loiter at the bottom end of the table? Uh, well, I do not uh, personally believe that they will be vying for the playoffs. But the thing that I believe is that they'll probably not end the tournament with uh, being the Vodum spoon winners, right? I personally believe that they will probably win a few games. Especially uh, if you see after the last night game, Dhoni probably said they'll tweak a bit and he probably uh, wants his team to get out, get all out in 16 over. So probably they will be more attacking. I do not believe that probably they have that energy and the confidence left and also their squad lacks a bit of middle over firepower just because of the a big legend like Suresh Rana is not available. It's not easy to replace someone like Rana. He's at the pedestal of someone like Virat Kohli or David Warner for his team, right? But that was a big loss. They are suffering a lot. And I think it's too late for them, but probably they will be one of those teams which will probably stop a few teams from qualifying, right? So I believe probably they will be a team who will probably stop at least one of Sunrisers, KKR or probably RCV. I can quite easily see that as well. You'll see CSK when they're mathematically impossible for them to qualify will start then knocking a few people off their perch, won't they? And suddenly start turning in some performances. Ahead of this game, CSK lead the head-to-heads against Sunrisers by 12 matches to four. CSK got a fairly dominant record against most of the franchises in the IPL because they've got a very, very good history in it. It's a slightly different kettle of fish though this time. I think Sunrisers will go into this one with a little bit more belief. I know who you're going to pick, Neil. You'll take. You'll tell me Sunrisers are going to win. Abhishek, you're more neutral um, because you're my Rajasthan Royals fan. Um, if you were to have to uh, put up a winner for tomorrow's game between the Sunrisers and CSK, where would you go? Uh, well, I would still believe that Sunrisers are the favourite. I think they're starting to just the click. The Warner Beresto is doing good. Uh, Rachid is now really into the games. Earlier teams were allow, uh, allowing to play him out, but I don't think it's possible now. I believe that SRS has, it will be a close game. CSK has nothing to do now and with Dhoni showing all his intentions that he's ready to give it to us. It's going to be a close game, but I think SRS will just miss it. Well, it's uh, going to be an interesting one and uh, we'll see what CSK are made of as they take on the Sunrisers tomorrow. Neil and Abhishek, thank you very much for being on the show again. Thanks, James. Thanks, Abhishek. Thanks so much. Thanks, Neil. And uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. It's obviously the IPL Daily, so we'll be back again tomorrow. Thanks to the sponsors, BodylineTshirts.com and moonrisecricket.co.uk. I've been James. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Join us every day throughout IPL 2020. Follow us on Twitter at cricket underscore badger. Join in the fun. We'll see you again tomorrow. Regina King for Cadillac Escalade. Let's say you make it to the top. What's next? Relish in the glory of your accomplishments? Okay, sure, for a minute. But then you move forward. Take the 2021 Escalade. 
Cadillac's newest arrival is more than just a celebration of iconic luxury. It's the most technologically advanced Escalade ever. Because arriving is just the beginning. The 2021 Cadillac Escalade. Never stop arriving.